All right, so with cars like this, you do some experiments, and then you let it simmer overnight, see what other ideas you can come up with. So where we are right now, we verified network integrity of the drivetrain and the chassis can. Uh, both are sound, all the modules are connected, but on the drivetrain can, the ECM, the engine control module, is the gateway from the other networks to the transmission, the fuel pump control module, uh, basically the uh, direct select, the servo that is on the transmission, and we can't talk to one, two, three, four modules on the drivetrain. These are solely on the drivetrain can. Uh, the AMG trans control unit we can talk to um, on the chassis can, that one's connected to both. So this AMG drive unit, you read fault code, hey, we're happy, right? So, in the engine control module, everything's plugged in, reset, I reset the codes a few times. Read fault code, we have these 10 codes. Right fuel level sensor has a malfunction. We did not have that initially. I think it happened after, you know, connecting and disconnecting stuff, you know, the networks. Implausible data received from air conditioning. Communication with control unit transmission has a malfunction. Communication with ESP has a malfunction. Communication with battery has a malfunction. Instrument cluster. Electronic ignition lock. And communication with central gateway has a malfunction. That is also... Um, a new code. Implausible data received from electronic selector lever module, which we don't have. We have the direct shift system, or direct select rather, and then the left fuel level sensor has a malfunction. So 10 codes, but they're slightly different. Before we had this one that I was really worried about, 374A, internal data could not be stored in the control unit. And then, I went through variant coding. Now this is specific to the kind of the main gateway modules of what options are installed on the vehicle. So if we read the coding for the engine control module here, it starts with 001 and goes all the way to 099. And some of them are pretty straightforward, like throttle valve actuator. Oh, it's aluminum. And the options are aluminum or plastic. <laughs> so I went through all these and kind of, you know, did a rationality check. Like, do we actually have this module? There are a few that didn't make sense. I called them red flags. So 009 ESM ISM installed right here we have the ISM we do not have ESM so question mark on that one 024 all-wheel drive this one is a big red flag because it says all-wheel drive installed however this car is rear-wheel drive I looked underneath there are no front drive shafts it's definitely rear-wheel drive the owner said you cannot drive it even if three snowflakes are on the ground because it just spins out like crazy on the summer tires um, and it has like 500 horsepower. So that one it doesn't make any sense to me. Why does it say that all-wheel drive is equipped? Uh, let's keep going. Next one is 025 transmission. It says automatic to sport and if we go in here the options are Manual, manual transmission sport, automatic one, automatic two, sequitronic one, sequitronic two, automatic two, sport. So, I mean, this one sure looks like it's automatic two, sport. It does have the paddle shifters here. So, I'm, I don't know, it doesn't say N150 or N153 or anything, it just says you know, by the name. So that's a question mark. Oh, what else? 34 and 80. So 34 
says control unit fuel pump not installed. Well, that's kind of weird. And then on 080, it says variable fuel pump not installed. Well, it has to have some kind of fuel pump. And it does have a fuel pump control module, the N118. In those two codes that came up, the uh, level sensor malfunction, we didn't have those before. And it's saying that the fuel pump's not installed. Super weird. Now, when you're in the coding menu, you see the you see this right coding option here. So let's say if we change this 080 to installed and click OK, and you can say right coding, that will basically program this new configuration, whichever one you selected, to the engine computer. That's in theory. So we'll select yes, and then boom, the function was unsuccessful because of a communication fault. Now is that because this is an aftermarket scanner and we can't just go in there and willy-nilly change these parameters? Or could it have something to do with this 374A internal data could not be stored in the control unit? We don't have this code right now, but it was there when you know we first got the vehicle. So I want to try going into a module that we know is good and try changing a parameter in you know in one of those modules. It, is our scanner able to do this right coding procedure? So for example, let's go to instrument cluster. You can, see, you can see that you can't talk to the transmission because you can't show the Prindle because that has to go through the engine control module. Okay, so same thing, variant coding. And I, j I just pick one. I mean, sometimes that's the way to learn. So for example, oil level indicator, engine oil level, no oil level indicator. So if we press that, and let's just say we want oil level in trip computer menu. Okay? So we change that PID, and now we write coding. Click yes, and it says switch off ignition. Switch off ignition. Okay? Switch on ignition. Okay? coding has been carried out. So now when we go into variant coding right there it saved it oil trip in trip or oil level in trip computer menu. We can change it back to no oil level indicator. Go through the same steps. So turn off ignition. Okay. Turn on ignition, OK. Control module reset. Coding has been carried out. So the scanner seems to have the capability to change individual coding parameters, which is really cool. That's powerful. But in the engine control module, we get kicked out. It says communication error. We have this code, internal data could not be stored in the control unit, which is very strange. Um, and it's, it has very, you know, the wrong parameters stored in the coding. Like it, sa it says it has all-wheel drive and it doesn't have a fuel pump. <laughs> so at this point, I really suspect that engine control module is having a bad day. It has you know, had a stroke or something, the brain got fried, and now you can't talk to the modules that are actually installed on the vehicle. It doesn't know that they're there. That's all I can come up with. It's online. I mean, we can talk to it through the chassis can. It has powers and grounds, like it controls the throttle. 
You can you can read live data, but it you know it doesn't know. Can't talk to the transmission. And we can't change any of the parameters. So are we calling a bad engine computer on a 2010 Mercedes AMG? <laughs> that sounds really expensive. We have to be 1,000% sure of that. Um, last check we can do is get to the engine computer, and it lives behind the right fender. So I assume we have to take the wheel off and the fender liner or something silly. And just do a visual inspection, unplug it, check all the pins, plug it back in, see if anything changes at all. While we're there, obviously we'll check powers and grounds. And then that's it. We have to get a new engine computer, and I, I assume if it's blank, you have to get it programmed at the Mercedes dealership. It's not just a simple recode because the dealer, I think, would run into this exact same problem. It would say, hey, communication fault. You can't recode this module. So that kind of sucks. I have a feeling that parts will definitely be required, and they're not going to be cheap. So if I come up with any ideas, we'll turn the camera back on. I guess I'll tear off the fender and look for this engine computer. But that's, that's the diagnosis here. You need an oscilloscope, a scanner... OEM service info, wiring diagrams. Um, for these code descriptions, most of them are not in service info. I mean, I looked. So you kind of have to <laughs> just go with it. So that's it for now. There's a follow up. I'm sure there will be. The owner does want his Mercedes back. So um, we'll continue this in the next part. So we're going after this engine control module on the AMG E63 and it lives right here behind the right front fender. Great spot for it honestly. Um, <laughs> I mean I guess it doesn't get hot if you attach it to the if you don't attach it to the engine but it looks like uh, it could get pretty wet over here. And I see water dripping down whatever connector this is. Well, let's get this thing out of here get some part numbers off of it. Um, the dealer said, local dealer, said that they could get one for about $1,500. So this is a pretty big call. And programming, we're going to have to, you know, think tool pros cannot handle this. But a couple tools can. Uh, for example, I just saw a video on the Super Mario Diagnostic Channel. If you guys don't know about that channel, go check it out. Um, so Mario is very knowledgeable with European cars, and he just showcased the Top Don Phoenix Max doing a programming on a 2009 Mercedes, actually with very similar symptoms. Same communication codes, so these modules, they just go bad. Um, so either that tool or the launch, uh, the big launch, the Pad 5, can do this programming. So um, I do have the launch on hand. I haven't used it much because I haven't needed to, but this is a perfect opportunity to try that tool out. So um, once we get the computer out and get the replacement, then we'll get to the, the fun programming. To get this thing out, looks like uh, these two bolts hold in the bracket and then the bracket attaches to the computer. So let's pull that out, get this thing out of here, take some pictures. Let's go to town here. These two nuts. Now the owner said the dealer had the computer out for some reason. I don't know if they're hot on the trail or not, but obviously they didn't fix anything. So now it's up to us to actually fix the car, not just have it for three months and then give it back. By the way, the dealer did not charge the owner anything, which is a good thing because I guess they didn't do anything. Um, I suspect this computer was getting bad. That was the initial complaint of the stall and the, you have to like reconnect the battery or do a battery reset for it to fire up again. And then once it sat at the dealer for a while, it just went completely bad. 
There's one bulk connector. There's two bulk connectors. Get this harness out of the way. Hopefully extract our computer. There you go. Yep. So let me just unscrew these uh, torque bolts and we'll get the bracket off. We'll have to replace this thing. I mean, it does look a little, little bit weathered. There's some rust on it because it lives out, you know, right by the wheel. So the magic box. Ta-da! So there are the part numbers, A156-900-1500, Motronic. Guessing you can pop off this cover here. I mean, we could do that. Nothing to lose, really. We're replacing this thing anyways. So... Actually, on second thought, the dealer said they needed the core back, <laughs> so I probably shouldn't pry it open or damage the case to go too hard on this thing. We'll just squeeze it back shut. Like no one was ever here. Yeah, it's not coming apart unless you really want to chisel at that seal. Well, it's the moment of truth today. Brand new engine control module. So this is the original one. Right from the Mercedes dealer. This puppy is close to $1,500. So it's kind of a big call. And they said it's pre programmed and pre coded, which would be really nice. But if it isn't, then uh, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. First, we gotta plug it in, see if anything happens. So here it is. Part number is a little different. It's supposedly remanufactured. He said it's programmed to the VIN. Let's pop this sucker in. So I'm just gonna let the computer hang out here for now. That plug definitely goes in like that. This plug definitely goes in like the other way. It's on there. All right, let's uh, hook up the battery. I'll hook up the main maintainer, the Tornado 90,000. Jump in this thing and see what happens.